Little Jelly Donut, how I've missed you! <laughs> no! Stop everything, Cat! Everything? The pirates are digging up the whole neighborhood! We've got a really big problem! Let's do this thing! <laughs> Out of me way, Lamb Beastie! Pirates! What's going on here? Yar! We be digging for treasure! What makes you think there's treasure in this neighborhood? Under our mailbox! Why, this old-timey treasure map we found! We be minding our business, enjoying our jelly donuts! Did you say jelly donuts? <laughs> Down, boy! When we found this here treasure map, looky here, an X! X means treasure! I guess that X on the map might mean there's treasure in the neighborhood. But the treasure's not near the mailbox. Look, the drawings on the map show real places in the neighborhood, like the mailbox. The X shows where the treasure should be. There's the X, and there's the mailbox, way over here. Yeesh! Don't you pirates know how to read a treasure map? Aye, Cap'n knows all about maps. Uh, actually I don't, but Buckler knows how to read a map. I thought Greybeard knew how to read the map. I thought you knew how to read the map. Aye, what about me? <laughs> Everyone knows you can't read a map. It is not me fault. I had the sniffles the day they taught map reading in me pirate school. Me too! So none of you know how to read a map? Nope. Uh -uh. Never. Okay, Cat and I can help you if you promise to stop digging up our neighborhood until we figure out where the treasure is. I can do that. So check it out. These tracks show us where to go to get to the X. Hey, just like the blueprint told us where the roof should go. Exactly. The tracks start at the mailbox. Mailbox, ahoy! I found it. Next, the map says we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps to the fire hydrant. Uh, how come sometimes the map thingy shows two tracks and sometimes it only shows one? That's the most ridiculous question I ever heard. Actually, Actually, that's a really good question. I have no idea. That's what I said. Good question, Buckler. Oh, oh, maybe when there's one footprint, we should hop on one foot. I guess we could give that a try. Follow me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Heave ho! Oh no, this isn't where the X is on the map. Look, we're here. The tracks tell us to go around and around the hydrant. Why would we go round and round off Dizzy Light? Another good question. I'm not sure, but that's what the map says. And we follow the map. I, I follow the map to find the pirate treasure far away from shore. We'll run and run and run around and then we'll run some more. Then we go one, two, three steps across this bench. One, two, three. should be right under this tree. Hey, Mac, what's supposed to go there? This space is for something we're hoping to own. A magnificent, marvelous arch made of stone. A curvy shape. But this part of the story may cause you some shock. The arch is inside of a cave and would take someone very brave to go inside it to save that remarkable rock. So the arch is trapped inside a cave, huh? Oh, yes. Very dangerous. Well, that is a sad story. Uh, good luck, Mac. Cat, our hats. I think we've already covered how cool they are. No, this is the adventure we've been waiting for. We're supposed to find that arch. <laughs> so many exciting things have already happened. We saw rocks, we talked about my pajamas. <laughs> Matt, we're gonna find that lost arch and bring it back to the museum where it belongs. Oh, good. I've already made the arrangements. Big hurry to get to the cave. Hmm. 
Uh, yeah, big hurry. No problem. We'll go straight there, because the fastest way to get somewhere is to travel in a straight line. Really? Yep. Let's say you were trying to fly to that cloud up ahead. You can get there by making twists and turns. But it'll take a long time. The quickest path is always a straight line. In that case, we'd like to go the straightest way. Straight away! You got it! Uh, here already? That was fast. I've got to take the pig to the pyramids, but I'll be back to pick you guys up. Oh, I almost forgot. Mac wanted me to give you this map of the cave. A map shows where things are. Thanks, Ramon. I do what I can. Um, Peg, maybe this cave is a little, um... Too exciting. <laughs> okay, so the cave has been set teeth, and sure, it's a little dark in here, but there's nothing to worry about. Whoa! Hey, someone put these marbles here on purpose. It's a trap, and that's a big, big problem. problem. This map shows lots of traps inside the cave. I repeat, big problem. Why didn't you say it with me? Because it's not a big problem if we use our map. The map shows traps coming up. And if we know where they are, we can get past them. Once you pass the marbles, there's a secret hidden gap. But if you know what's coming, getting past it is a snap. A hole's beneath these leaves, according to the map. Whoa. So now we can jump over it and get on past the trap. Snakes. The snakes are past the bridge, according to the map. So let's stay nice and low like so and crawl on past the trap. You were really right, Peg. This map is really something. When you look down at the map, you see just what is coming. The last trap is the boulder, according to the map. Ah! So we can leap on top of it and get on past the trap. Thanks to our hand. I'm saying you're wrong. You're saying I'm right. I'm right. You said it again. Excuse me? We need some help. Can't you see I'm busy arguing with him? I'm arguing with him. How about we help settle your argument and then you can help us? The problem is we each want to be the first to win a me got me got A prize for doing eight amazing things before the king and queen. My brilliant plan is to do seven amazing things, then one more. My incredible plan is to do six amazing things, and then two more. Seven plus one more equals eight, so your plan works. Ha <laughs> ha! But six plus two more equals eight, too. Yes! Both plans totally work. I'll get, I'll get the me got, me got. The thing we need help with is clutter blab jabber blab jabbers. People, who doesn't know that? So we need to pass eight people and cross a verbal verbal splat splat, verbal verbal splat splat. To win mo 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 ga 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 mo 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 ga ga ga. I have no idea what those words mean. They're way too big for me. They're way, way too big for what me. What do they mean the words are too big for them? I think it has to do with patterns, Cat. The silly words all repeat sounds in a certain order. Me, got, me, got is a first thing, second thing, first thing, second thing pattern. Like blab, jabber, blab, jabber. Those guys like that little pattern. But verbal, verbal, splat, splat, verbal, verbal, splat, splat is first thing, first thing, second thing, second thing. Two of one thing, then two of the other. Aha! Uh -huh. And mo, 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 ga, 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 mo, mo, mo. of one thing than three of the other. The shorter pattern is more their thing. Now we know we need to pass eight people. We passed those two guys, so we need to pass six more to get to eight. More blab jabber, blab jabbers ahead. Whoa! Oh. 
wall. Yeah. You pushed me off the wall. Now I'm on tippy tippy top top tippy tippy top top cause you had a fall. <laughs> you pushed me off the wall. Now I'm tippy tippy top top tippy tippy top top cause you had a fall. <laughs> You pushed me off the wall. Now I'm tippy tippy top top tippy tippy top top cause you had a fall. Woo! Why are you guys pushing each other off the wall? It's not very nice. It's what we like to do. Woo! We love our little game. Woo -hoo! And now I'm back on tippy tippy top top. Tippy tippy top top. Tippy tippy top top. Tippy tippy top top. Hold on, cat. Tippy tippy top top is that first first second second pattern. Like that next thing we're looking for. The burble burble splat splat burble burble splat splat. So maybe they'll know what it means. It's a river, of course. Ah! You'll find one. Ah! That way. Ah! So after we pass eight people, we'll cross the river. And get that mo 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 ga 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 mo 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 ga ga ga, which I'm thinking is really shiny or cuddly or loud. We already passed the two men by the tree. And now we've passed three, oh. four, ah. five all together. <laughs> five plus three more is eight. So we need to pass three more people to get to... Six, seven, eight. Wow. Do horses count as blab jabber blab jabbers? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, at least they're not a bunch of naysayers. We've passed all eight blab jabber blab jabbers. And there's the burble burble splat splat burble burble splat splat. Which we are crossing to find the king and queen of grown up. Sing out merrily, tra la la. Tell your mama and pa 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 You've won mo 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 ga 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 mo 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 ga 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 Three mo's followed by three guys. Albert Einstein! Hey, good cat! Oh, Jesse! Sorry to interrupt your equations. And your soup. The thing is, Jesse's mom is getting married. Congratulations, Jesse! What wonderful news! But more people in a family means dividing stuff up more ways and getting less. So how is it wonderful? The answer has to do with finite and infinite. Things like all of us on seats at the table are finite. There are a certain number that can be counted. When you divide them up, everybody gets less. But the most important things in a family are infinite. You can divide them up all you want, and you always have enough. I don't understand. And I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, infinite means there are so many, you could never count them all. Like the stars in the sky. If you divided up the sky, and all the stars on one side were pegs, and all the stars on the other side were cats, you'd both still have more stars than you could ever count. When something's infinite, there's always enough for everyone. Why'd you write a sideways eight on my stars? That's the sign for infinity, an infinite amount. Okay, uh, thanks, Al. So what's dividing up stars got to do with Mom marrying Sam? Uh, well, maybe Al was saying... <gasps> That's it, you shape-shifting genius. Huh? Your heart was an infinity sign. Al was saying love is infinite. You can divide it up all you want, and you'll always have enough love, even if your mom gets married. I'll have less of the finite stuff. Less olives in the salad. Yeah. And less choice of chairs at the table. Yeah. You don't really care about those things, though, do you, Jesse? Not so much. What you really care about is your mom's love. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that, Jesse. Hello? Call in the Intergalactic Superhero Team. Uh, I think we have a bad connection. Uh, is this thing on? Intergalactic Superhero Team, I need you to come here immediately. We're on Planet Palacious, where my son is freaking out. Peg and Cat, you're our only hope. Sounds like this is a job for... The Intergalactic Superhero Team! Cat, chart a course for the Planet Palacious. Let's get there quick. Super fast space speed! Is that the planet Palicious? That's no planet. Planets are round shapes called spheres. That's a cylinder. A cylinder is a solid shape that has two circles on either end, which are connected by a tube. So it's not a planet. It's Dot Space Station! Hi! What are you doing out here? 
She's fixing spaceships. That's so cool. Good luck, Dot. Bye. Is that black thing delicious? It's round. That's not a sphere either. A sphere's a solid round shape like a ball. That black shape is flat. It's a black ball! If you fly into a black hole, you can get stuck in it. Stare clear, cat! Straight ahead, I count one giant sphere. It's delicious! Superhero team, and we're ready to face your emergency. It's not exactly an emergency, but you're the only ones in the universe who can help us. Huh? Yay! They're really here! This is awesome! My four year old son, Felix, is your biggest fan. <gasps> you're Super Peg, the most awesomest, coolest, wonderful superhero of all time. Hi there, little guy. <gasps> and you're Cat, the cutest, most lovable, amazing cat ever. He is. And you're Richard, super genius inventor. Well, I'm not really a genius. And you're Adbot, Richard's new invention that counts super duper fast. You really are our biggest fan. It's Felix's birthday, and, um, well, he was wondering if you could... I could please, please, please ride in your spaceship, please. Well, since it's your birthday... Yay! We'll have him back by dinner. I'm so, so, so happy! Oh, my fuzz! That's Super Peg's captain's chair, and these are your space controls. And that's your video screen. Hi, Mom! Intergalactic superhero team, I forgot to tell you that whatever you do, please keep Felix away from... Keep him away from what? I love buttons. His mom must have been trying to say, keep him away from buttons. Or keep him away from levers. Or keep him away from everything. Taking care of this crazy little fuzzball is gonna be a really big problem. I got him. Your spaceship is awesome. Oh, my fuzz. I just love being here. Oh, he is really cute. Now that we have another king, let the game begin! Yay! Yeah. What game are we playing? And why does it involve chasing me? Uh, uh, We're playing uh, chess. Uh, the goal is to capture the other side's king. I love capturing a king. Uh, I don't want to be captured. I don't want my friend chased. I don't want to play this game. I am totally freaking out. Cat's right. I should count to eight to calm down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it, you hopping geniuses. Huh? Excuse me? You two are making those little hops because you're kings. A king in chess can go one space at a time. But a queen can leap eight spaces. And I'm a queen, so I can go eight times further than a king. Like this. And this. Why didn't I think of that? Cat, did you bring a gift for the king? Uh, nope. Oh, no! It's King the Pig's birthday, and we didn't even get him a present. We've got a big problem. What do we do? Let's be brave and bold and just tell the pig we forgot and ask him what he wants for his birthday. You be brave and bold first. Uh, Mr. the Pig, your highness. Funny story. We haven't had a chance to buy you a birthday present. So, uh, what do you want? You already have all the triangles in the kingdom. Is there anything else that you've always wanted? Ever since I was a piggy prince, I've had but one request. To hear the song known through the land for being serious. And so you ask me, Peg the Bold and Good Sir Cat the Brave, to hear the silliest song in the land is the only thing I crave. You want a song as your present? We can sing. We can dance. We'd be happy to sing the silliest song in the land for you, Your Highness. Bring it on! We know what we're giving the pig for his birthday. And so... Problem 
solved. The problem is solved. We solved the problem. Problem solved. So anyway, Jesse, Sam and I wanted to tell you that we're getting married. <laughs> it's great news, right? It's, uh, uh, I've got a really big problem. Sim makes Mom happy. Okay. I want Mom to be happy. Of course. Sim makes me happy, too. And yet somehow... You're not sure how you feel about them getting married. Yeah. You should be jolly as a pirate. The more in your family, the merrier. We loves being a big old band of pirates. Arrgh. Arrgh. But pirates. Ramon just explained some math to me that's making me wonder if more in a group isn't merrier. It's really making me think. And I wonder if it might be worrying Jesse too. Check it out. With the parrot, there are five of you. So if you divide up a trunk of 20 jewels evenly, you each get four. Four jewels is sweet. But if there were only four of you, you'd each get five. Four jewels is sweeter. If there were only two, you'd each get ten. Ten jewels? I love our pirate gang. We always have enough. But in a smaller group, we get more stuff. So I stay together. I'm suddenly not sure. I think we better. So, Clouds, we need your help figuring out how Jesse should feel about his family becoming a bigger group. He says they work in their group of clowns. They live in their group of clowns. They love being in a big group of bananas. I mean, clowns. Ugh. Yeah, but clowns, when you do that act where you all squeeze into one car, it's really funny. But if there were fewer clowns, you'd each have more room. If there were only two, everybody could really spread out. At the table, you could each have your own seat instead of having to squish. They say they like their act. It makes the people laugh. But being in a smaller group would sure have its giraffe. I mean, advantages. So I stay together. What do you do it for? I think we better think some more. What about you guys, Peggy Cat? What about us? How do you two do it? Sharing every seat. Dividing every single sandwich that you eat. We love our little duo. And yet I guess it's true. More pickles would be nice. We need to think it through, like you, and you, and you. So now it's time for... Chocolate Milk! I'll pour in the milk. Can't grab the chocolate if you please. We're gonna mix them up. Oh yeah, just tell me when to squeeze. How much milk should I pour in? How much chocolate do you picture? Oh no! We, we can't, can't make chocolate, chocolate milk, milk if we don't, don't know the right, right mixture. Is it two equal parts? Chocolate and milk? I think it's chocolate up to here and a little splash of milk. Oh, if we don't know how much of each ingredient to add, we can't make chocolate milk. And that's a big problem. Could you two help me with the compost? I'm in. Cat? Cat? I'm on the fence. We still have to solve our big problem, remember? We can't make chocolate milk if we don't know the right mixture. Word! I've got a really cool chocolate milk recipe for you. It's one part chocolate and two parts milk. Go on. Peg, you pour the milk. Pig, you hold these. Out at the chocolate. Uh, Peg usually lets me squeeze. You're hoping for a recipe? Well, I have got the fix for the perfect chocolate milk because I know just, just the, the right, right mixture. One part chocolate and two parts milk. If I'm careful when I pour the milk flows in, one part chocolate and two parts milk. It's a three-part combination you can always use. We will. It looks pretty uneven. Maybe I should squeeze the rest. It's uneven for a reason. Those mixtures can be best. One part chocolate. And two parts milk. I so can't wait to taste it. It's going to be a thrill. Our problem is solved. Oh, it's everything I wish for. We need our chocolate milk because we need just, just the, the right mixture. mixture. Check it out! Whoa! A little chocolate in a lot of milk makes an awesome drink. 